Hi, this is Jonathan Dodge, Principal Applications Engineer with United Silicon Carbide, now Corvo. And this is a short presentation about the new Generation 4 1200 volt silicon carbide cascode FETs from United Silicon Carbide. In this video, we'll talk about the main features of the Generation 4 cascodes and the construction of the cascodes in general. And we'll compare data sheets with the Generation 3 cascode. And I'll provide some application tips. And finally, we'll look at where to find these parts in FetJet Calculator and also in the user guide. What is unique about United Silicon Carbide FETs is that they are based on a normally on Silicon Carbide JFET. And there are some advantages to using a JFET. One of the main ones is the low on resistance per unit area because there's no MOS gate for one reason. And so in the chart on the right, we can see uh, for unipolar devices, uh, the silicon carbide JFET is uh, highlighted by the blue dots here. The generation four JFETs are closest to the theoretical limit of the silicon carbide material, followed by silicon carbide MOSFETs. Then we have gallium nitride, and then finally silicon-based superjunction MOSFETs. Uh, because the RDS on per chip area is so low, the chip sizes can be smaller, and that means that the capacitances can also be lower. So the normally on characteristic is changed to normally off by connecting the normally on silicon carbide JFET in series with a normally off silicon MOSFET. The JFET gate is tied to the source, and then the MOSFET serves to switch the source node of the JFET. So the JFET is fully on when its gate source voltage is about zero volts. And this happens, of course, when the MOSFET is on, either because the gate is turned on or because you have reverse current flow through the MOSFET. And then whenever the MOSFET is off, current through the JFET quickly pulls the source potential to JFET high and turns the JFET off. So the MOSFET is co-packaged with the silicon carbide JFET into a single device with the gate source drain terminals that you'd find on other type of devices. And um, this is a proprietary MOSFET that's used. Uh, has 10% of the RDS on of the JFET, sometimes less. So the construction of the CAS code can be done a couple of ways. On the left is shown the side-by-side -side construction where the JFET is silver centered directly to the back side of the package. And then the MOSFET is attached on top of a ceramic isolator. And then a separate set of bond wires comes over to the pin. On the right, we have a stacked CAS code configuration where the MOSFET is centered directly on top of the JFET chip, which in turn is silver centered to the package. And this, of course, has the advantage of eliminating the second set of bond wires, so less stray inductance. So it can be useful to understand the capacitances in the CAS code because they are different from, uh, say, a MOSFET or an IGBT. And the big difference is due to the fact that the JFET itself has practically no drain to source capacitance. And that's because there's no PN junction in the path. There's nothing in the design of the JFET chip to introduce a significant capacitance there. So with that capacitance being zero and then connected in series with the MOSFET, which has its own gate to drain capacitance and gate to source capacitance, you can see that the gate to drain capacitance for the CAS code is practically zero because uh, zero capacitance in series with another capacitor is going to be practically zero. So you can see that in the capacitance graph for a part, you can see that the um, CRSS, which is the gate to drain capacitance, is almost zero. And then, uh, so what is the uh, output capacitance of this part? Well, in, it, in effect, it is the gate to drain capacitance of the JFET. And that's uh, shown here in the COSS. And then the input capacitance is from the MOSFET itself, mostly from its gate to drain, uh, sorry, from its gate to source capacitance. So now let's just take a quick comparison of two parts. One is the generation four CAS code and the other one is the generation three. These are very similar parts rating wise. So let's begin by comparing the on resistance of a generation four 1200 volt 30 milliohm part 
what they generate in three, it's actually 35 milliohm part, typical RDS on at room temperature. And um, they are actually about the same RDS on at uh, operating temperature. Um, the generation four part has a stronger temperature coefficient of RDS on. And the reason for that is that it's closer to the uh, ideal limit of the silicon carbide material. Um, so it's important to compare parts at operating temperature with the generation four parts. Uh, these parts have about the same on resistance at operating temperature in spite of the fact that the generation four JFET is smaller. Uh, and that's because of the lower RDS on per chip area of the generation four series. So the smaller chip size of the generation four part leads to lower capacitance. And uh, this, of course, results in faster switching. And a very important point is that the uh, reverse recovery charge effect is lower for the generation four parts, noticeably lower. And uh, this is nice. Also, the faster switching and the lower gate charge give you a wider control range for uh, soft switching applications. Taking a look at the gate charge, the generation four has a uh, somewhat lower gate charge than generation three. And the gate charge, by the way, is from the MOSFET in the CAS code, and that's because the reverse transfer capacitance is practically zero. So that gate charge is coming from the MOSFET. Um, so all CAS codes in general have low gate charge because the uh, JFET's gate to drain capacitance, the output capacitance, is charged by the load and not by the gate driver. Looking at the turn on switching loss, we see that the generation four part has a lower turn on loss overall. Much of this is due to the lower reverse recovery charge effect. Uh, so in the graph on the right here, we have generation four in the blue traces. Um, the light blue is at room temperature, dark blue at 125 degrees. And then for generation three part, the lighter orange is the room temperature and then the um, darker orange is 125 degrees C. Now you'll notice something peculiar. Um, the uh, generation three part has actually lower switching loss at the higher temperature. That's opposite for the generation four part. And this has to do with the temperature coefficient of the built-in JFET gate resistor. Looking at the turnoff switching energy, we see that for both the generation three and generation four, the turnoff switching energy is quite low. And the uh, temperature coefficient comes into play here. And we see again uh, with the, the light blue and dark blue, that's the generation four room temperature and operating temperature uh, turnoff switching loss. And uh, it's a turnoff switching loss is a little bit higher when the generation four part is hot. And this is different from uh, the generation three where at room temperature it's actually higher than when it's hot. So the, uh, the generation three part actually has a little bit lower switching loss at operating temperature, uh, but very close to the same. And again, very low EOF values, especially considering that we're switching 800 volts here. Okay, now time for some application tips. Okay, so let's talk about speed control. Um, as I mentioned before, the tiny reverse transfer capacitance means that uh, in switching applications, the gate drain capacitance of the JFET, which is your effectively your output capacitance, that capacitance is charged by the load, okay, instead of through uh, the gate driver. Uh, the gate driver, uh, sets the switching speed of the MOSFET, which in turn sets indirectly the switching speed of the JFET. So uh, the uh, current flowing at turn off, if we take a look at this diagram on the right, current flowing through the cascode at turn off begins to uh, divert through the uh, JFET gate to drain capacitance, and then it must flow through that JFET gate resistor. Well, that's fixed, it's not adjustable. Now the turn off of these parts tends to be very fast. so. Um, a good way to adjust the slew rates we recommend is adding an external drain of source capacitor. So that diverts a current away from the casco during turn off, helps you to set the slew rates, and then you add a resistor to set the damping. So in, order, in other words, that helps to control the amount of ringing. Okay. And uh, there's information about this in the user guide and other places, and uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. 
Okay, just a quick point about uh, oscillation for parallel parts and how to prevent it. So when you have parallel parts, parallel cast codes, um, you can have uh, oscillation between parts at radio frequency and that oscillation current path that matters is uh, current through the gate, okay? And that flows through the gate and also through the source. It's not really going through uh, the uh, gate to drain uh, the part so much because that reverse transfer capacitance is so small. It's also not flowing much through the uh, snubber. Now the snubbers do help to prevent oscillation because they reduce your slew rates and high slew rates can cause oscillation to begin. So they help to prevent it in the first place, but uh, not entirely. So what we recommend is adding a ferret bead to each gate in addition to a gate resistor, which can be separate for turn on or turn off or combined, that's okay. Um, but you wanna have on each gate a ferret bead plus a resistor. And the resistor, the resistor value can be lower than uh, without the ferret bead. Okay, and then impedance in the Kelvin source path is optional. Uh, what really matters is the loop impedance. You need to block the high frequency current path. Uh, you need to make sure that your uh, DC link uh, capacitors are, uh, of course, uh, low inductance close to the parts and that you have adequate bypassing on the gate driver itself so that uh, gate driver voltage doesn't sag and that uh, doesn't get involved in your oscillation. Okay, saving the best for last, the uh, FETCH calculator has these generation four parts in it. So if you go to design resources on the United Silicon Carbide website and choose FETCH calculator, and you will see these 1200 volt generation four parts are in the calculator. And finally, we have the user guide, which can be accessed also from design resources. If you look for app notes slash user guides, it's one of the tiles in there. And I have highlighted here the uh, 30 milliohm 1200 volt part that we have been comparing against the generation three part. And you can see the gate resistor and snubber value recommendations for initial testing. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thanks for watching.